The story starts with an excerpt from a speech that is held in Cape Town, South Africa. It is clearly part of a demonstration against the apartheid system. A large black man with a rolling voice says, It's up to every one of us to challenge the right of any law which willfully condemns any person to an inferior position. The lecture was being held outdoors, most of the crowd being colored. The main character in the story, Carly, a black man, follows every word the speaker says. He doesn't quite understand the full meaning of them, but realizes they are two words. The speaker tells Carly that he has certain rights. The picture of himself living like a white man frightens him, but at the same time, fascinates him. All he has ever been thought is that God made the white man white, the colored man brown, and the black man black, and that they must know their place. The people on the platform behave as if there were no difference in color. It makes sense, but still only in a vague way. All the time Carly is comparing what is happening on the platform to his own situation back home. There are people in different color could never offer each other a cigarette as a white woman does to a black man up on the stage. The idea makes him laugh, getting him noticed by a couple of people. This shows that Carly is not completely comfortable or at ease with this all information. His upbringing is strongly aimed in him. Playing with the thought of being as good as any other man, he remembers black opposers of apartheid going to prison, smiling. It confuses him. As a white woman speaker says, One must challenge all those ruminatory laws. Carla grows more confident. Fear and positivity are replaced with determination to act for equality. A white woman jeopardizing all her advantages to say what she believes in. Never had he seen anything like this in his hometown. A determination starts creeping over his fogness. Now he wants to challenge. Whatever the consequences, he wants to be in the newspaper smiling. This is a turning point in his life. After the meeting, on the way to the station, Carly is on the receiving end of the nest. Rachel is coming from an approaching car. Carly stared dazed, momentarily too stunned to speak. By reacting at all, it shows that he now questions this kind of treatment. To challenge like the white woman speaker said, he sits on a white's only bench at the railway station. Although this story spans over a limited time, Carly has gone through an extreme change in his life. He is now determined to fight for his own freedom as a human being. He rebels against his former upbringing imprinted in him and wants to find a new place in society for himself. The short story was written during the apartheid system. The bench at the railway station symbolizes South Africa society at that time. Carly refuses to move from the white's only bench and is therefore pulled away by the police. Under apartheid, even mixed marriages were not allowed. Schools, restaurants, and hotels were segregated. Pantu education was enforced for black people in South Africa in 1953. The blacks were thought that they were less intelligent than other races. Carly's initial confusion while listening to the speech can be linked to this form of brainwashing. Many were opposed to this oppressive system. Carly is of course alone in disobeying the police, but he represents all the black opponents of the apartheid and racial discrimination. Carly turned to resist to cling at the bench, to his bench. Carly is not only holding on to the bench, but also to his own existence as an equal citizen of South Africa. It was senseless fighting any longer. Now it was his turn to smile. Although Carly loses his grip, he is not defeated, he smiles as he's taken away. Carly wins the battle with himself and is proud of showing his victory.